Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Saturday the 11th of June and uh, it's the festival of Barnabas the Apostle. We are at St Mary's Halesworth. It's done that already. We're using the church rooms of common worship, that's where I should be. Uh, morning prayer on Saturday, ordinary time. <clears throat> if you're following the book, you'll find the words at the beginning after prayer during the day. If you're following, wanting to follow online, the words are at the uh, Church of England's website and a remiss of daily prayer. One may also download apps for Apple or Android devices. We'll wait for the bells. So I'm recording the audio, which I'll upload onto my Dominic Doble YouTube channel. The, uh, I'm live streaming on Facebook, and it stays there as video. You'll find the codes there on our, on our website for the Zoom meeting, and I'm in the building. You're very welcome to join me here, 8 and 6, every day, or a colleague. On Sundays, we have a traditional communion in the morning, and said even song with hymns in the evening, most Sundays. But this Sunday, we're at Chedderston for a tea, even song. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's praise. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and to meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed today are Numbers 100, 101 and 117. I have to keep your wits about you if you are following in the book. The Psalms are at the back, 100, 101 and 117. We open and close each with the refrains. Uh, we'll read straight through. We say the glory be after the last verse on each occasion, and Paul will use the prayers that follow as we see fit. Psalms 100, 101, and 117. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. O be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. End his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting.
Blessed are those who fear the Lord. I will sing of faithfulness and justice. To you, O Lord, will I sing. Let me be wise in the way that is perfect. When will you come to me? I will walk with purity of heart within the walls of my house. I will not set before my eyes the counsel that is evil. I abhor the deeds of unfaithfulness. They shall not cling to me. A crooked heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. One who slanders a neighbour in secret, I will quickly put to silence. Haughty eyes and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. My eyes are upon the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. One who walks in the way that is pure shall be my servant. There shall not dwell in my house one that practices deceit. One who utters falsehood shall not continue in my sight. Morning by morning will I put to silence all the wicked in the land, to cut off from the city of the Lord all those who practice evil. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And blessed are those who fear the Lord. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. So we scroll past our minute first reading to the canticle. If you are following in the book, I perhaps should have said you might like to turn up halfway through amongst the saints' days and festivals. Today's date, the 11th of June, where you will find direction to, for example, the canticle we're just about to say, which is, I think, is probably the common of apostles, which is <coughs> towards the end of that uh, saints' section. If you're following online, as I say, we just scroll past the Jeremiah reading of two verses, unusually. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall the Lord God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. You shall be called priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as ministers of our God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. <coughs> Jeremiah reading, no, not Jeremiah reading yet. From um, Celebrating the Saints, Biography of Barnabas. Though not listed among the twelve apostles, according to the evangelists, Barnabas emerges in the act of the apostles as one of the most significant of their number. He sold his estate and gave the proceeds to the church, since all things were to be held in common and clearly became a leader. He is described as a Levite from Cyprus, so like his friend Paul was from the Greek world rather than that of Palestine, and it was he who introduced Paul to the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. He was sent to Antioch apparently to guide the Christians there in their relations with non-Jewish converts, prompting concepts of all being one in Christ. He broke with Paul to go to Cyprus, and tradition has it that he was martyred there in the year 61. Jeremiah 9 from 23 to 24. Or verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah, major prophet, a uh, significant body of text. If you open a Bible halfway through, if you've got the um, first and the second covenants there, you should hit about the Psalms, the wisdom literature, <clears throat> move towards the back, you hit the prophets, major prophets kick off, Isaiah and Jeremiah, not necessarily in that order, but uh, Jeremiah is about there, sort of between half and two thirds of the way through <clears throat> the good book, and you need to find large number nine, chapter number nine. That's the large numbers at the head of the paragraph, the chapter number. Small numbers in the text, verses 23 and 4. Thus says the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this. That they understand and know me, that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord.
I was going to move on because there doesn't seem to be too much to say. It uh, sounds like it's uh, stating the bleeding obvious. But I guess it's something that maybe we do need to take. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom. Don't let the might boast in their might. And the idea here is that God is mighty, that God is wise, and that if we have any might or any wisdom or any longevity, it is due to God's gift. The um, two trees in Genesis, one was wisdom and uh, one or knowledge, and one was uh, never-ending life, fullness of life. And those were two defining concepts of God that made God God rather than mortal and um, or part of creation. And uh, so we've got wisdom here, but also we've got uh, might and wealth and these other human characteristics of what makes for greatness. But clearly God is greater than all these things. However, the writer says what God actually um, gives credit to is love, justice and righteousness. Those things are things God delights in. Let us pursue them and place value on those. If only GDPR was based on such things. Um, imagine how different life would be. Love, justice and righteousness. How much love, how much justice, how much righteousness is there this year compared to last year <clears throat> in ourselves, in our communities, in our nation, comparing that to quantities of those things, if that's possible to measure in other nations. Acts 4 from 32 is our next reading. Acts in the, fairly and squarely in the Second Covenant after the Gospels. So if you turn two thirds way through your Bible and uh, move towards the back, you'll go through those traditional English initially Jewish, but uh, become traditionally English names, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then you'll find Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, Luke's second gospel, as it's sometimes known. We're looking for large number four, chapter four, and small numbers in the text. Verses again, 32 to 37. Acts four from 32. You'll find it online just after the canticle read a moment ago. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses and sold them had brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He told, sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So that little passage, which uh, I had forgotten, describes us, describes um, Barnabas to us. Typically, he's got at least one name uh, over and above the one that he's known as, Joseph and Barnabas. We're told that he comes from Cyprus and we're told he's a Levite. So he's um, one or other of his parents, even if he's got that uh, Gentile experience, one or other of his parents, um, dad, I guess, um, is from the Levitical tribe, um, unless he's somehow managed to be brought into it and uh, has operated in that priestly function, which I guess may be an alternative rendering of that meaning. So he's a uh, mixed bag of uh, heritage, and so it's no wonder that, uh, as we read in his biography earlier, that he broadened the scope, broadened the bounds of the mercy of the church to uh, engage with and include um, non-Jews, the people of the uncircumcision. And that great uh, sharing and commonality. I experienced it once in a fellowship I was a part of, but uh, sharing tea and cake is one thing, but uh, sharing of homes, property, wealth, income is another. So may God encourage and enable us to uh, share um, more appropriately, I guess, might be the message that comes out of this, that uh, others may see and know that we don't set as much store on possessions as some. Whilst we as independent charities, PCCs, parochial church councils, we do have to demonstrate that we are taking care of our assets, strangely enough. So to the responsory back in morning prayer on Saturday during ordinary time. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, 
that glory may dwell in our land. The Song of Zechariah, the opening and closing refrains are from the Common of Apostles, I should imagine. So if you're following the book, you might like to look those up. Today's date, length of June, or just join in with us when we get to Blessed Be the Lord. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that shall last. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that shall last. Let us pray. <clears throat> Source of the Sabbath, air of peace, comforter, advocate. Three in one, one in three. We come to you at the beginning of this day, and uh, we pray that we will be known as peaceable people, as reconcilers. We pray that we will rest on your eternal change less and less in these days of anxiety, challenge and woe, and that we will rely on your protection and your provision. And we bring to you those who would otherwise be excluded by church, their communities, by their family, because of their identification, their sexual preferences, other aspects of who they are, no fault of their own necessarily. <clears throat> Those people that need to know they belong, they need to know they have their place, they need to have an opportunity to be fruitful, to be loved, to be creative and to have opportunity to live without fear, responsibility, pain. And we pray that you will uh, intervene directly but also bless organisations and agencies that work for that end, pray especially for those refugees who feel, arguably in many cases quite rightly, that they should be welcomed here, who find themselves being deported to the middle of Africa um, and uh, being made to make their claims there, presumably having been deprived of any, of any access to any documentation that we've decided they need to make those claims. May they know your peace and your provision in that place. And may God be merciful to our government for making such decisions. World Prayer News, the Donovan Fellowship, they've got a permit, there's a set of letters, FCRA, which allows them to receive funds from overseas. It's due for renewal at the end of the month, and they ask that we pray that it be granted so they may continue their work. From Christian Action, Research and Education, the Spirit of God, please restrain forces of evil, they write, human and demonic, from fanning the flames of war across the world. Be with those who work to bring humanitarian aid and for reconciliation, ceasefires and steps towards just and lasting peace. Through the powerful authority of Christ's name we pray. And uh, it's not just um, forces of evil, but it's simply our lack of understanding, arguably, of the global food web. For example, our lack of appreciation of the effects of uh, our industrialization on the majority world and its change to their weather systems, because our weather systems are so variable in any case. So it's just, in fact, the ignorance of ordinary everyday life in many respects, rather than actual forces of evil that need restraining. We simply need to stand up and speak up, it seems to me. Let us... Pray that God enables us to do that from Green Christian.
The global deal to protect nature could be jeopardised by China's decision to postpone UN talks due to a COVID-19 outbreak. The people are calling for the summit to be moved to another country. About 195 nations were set to finalise an accord to safeguard plants, animals and ecosystems at the UN summit COP15, which had been due to start in Kunming. But with cities in lockdown under China's zero COVID strategy, the country has proposed that the talks already delayed four times, delayed till next year, scuppering UN hopes for the meeting to be held in the third quarter. So whilst uh, it's disappointing that it's been postponed, it's good that so many countries are engaged. And uh, whilst I remain sceptical that uh, signing on behalf of countries on pieces of paper actually makes any difference whatsoever, nevertheless, it's um, good to have intent, it seems to me. So may God uh, arrange that, that conference and that may go ahead and agreement reached that is binding and actually makes a difference to... Um, sustainability of biodiversity on this little lump of rock as it hurtles through space that we may enjoy better quality of life and indeed life as one of those species for longer than perhaps we might otherwise be able to hope for. In our benefit cycle of prayer today we pray for our elected representatives I think in and across the county and beyond. We do town, district, county councillors and our national MP. We pray for your blessing on them that they may be um, just going to go back to our gospel reading for those words that we were looking for. May our elected representatives represent steadfast love, justice and righteousness in the earth, that they may be seen to act in accordance with God's desire for God's creation and humanity as it takes its place within that. May, be, may they be inspired with hope and uh, that the good they do recognised, and may they uh, also be made aware of the responsibilities they have to all of their constituents and members of their communities, whether they would necessarily even know that they were there or vote for them or not. May they have hope and ambition, joy and an eye to ethics, justice, honesty, integrity as they serve As we pray for those in our benefits, we pray for our ministers today, <clears throat> as usual on a Saturday. Our elders, Janet, Eileen, John, Malcolm, Robert, Alison, Jason, Margaret, our reader, Diana, honorary associate priests, Jonathan, Anna, David, Vic, and Alison, assistant curates, Linda, team vicar, Ginny, team rector, me, Dominic. We pray your blessing on them. We thank you for bringing us together as a varied, supportive, friendly in the main bunch for uh, getting on with each other, getting on with each of our parishes, getting on with engaging with your mission and ministry across this group. And uh, we thank you for that provision. We ask that you bring healing and uh, creativity out of challenges that we each may face, we may face together in the days and weeks ahead. We ask that you enable us to be people of steadfast love, peace and righteousness, that uh, you will grow our account in, under those um, budget heads over the course of the next weeks and years. May we also bridge the gap, as Barnabas did, between those who may be expected to belong and those who might be expected not to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pan solo kalirin stirin, thas madro ashba fasa mi asim shiba alam akola hati ashba. Shem siri ma madro koshim solo koshim alaham ya kama hasa amashba alam akoshim solo koya koshim siri ukara ma fasa atas. Tamar ma hano asu koshim kriya ba vas para ma sani shora koshim siri ma madro koshim ma tara koshim badaria. Shem solo ma fasa hasa madro koya siri ma siri ukara vas para ma fasa hano koshim siri ma tara koshim badaria. Shem solo ma fasa hasa Thank you. 
یِم چھِ اَمہِ آیہِ نٮ۪بر تہِ واریاہ خۄش گژھان یہِ چھِ کٔشیٖرِ منٛز اَلگ تہِ آسان یہِ آسان چھِ أسۍ مٔنٛگِتھ وَنٛدَس اَمہِ آیہِ دِوان کھۄتہٕ زیادٕ یَتھ کٔنۍ مَمبَش مَفاد مَفاد شمسی رِکَش مَفاد سَمَر پَتہٕ مَفاد پَتہٕ سَمَر 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 Bountiful God, giver of all gifts, who poured your spirit upon your servant Barnabas and gave him grace to encourage others, help us by his example to be generous in our judgments and unselfish in our service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.